My first big actual thing was recording an album with a guy called Kaziah Jones when I was 15 years old. And it was the engineer, I believe he's the musical director for Iggy Pop. His name's Kevin Armstrong. And Kevin heard about an audition that was going with this dude called Daniel Reddingfield. And then he was like, look man, you should go. And I was like, I've never done an audition before, how does it work? He's like, just go turn up you know, maybe something might happen. And when I got down there, I saw Frank Tonto, I saw uh, uh, Chris Bailey, I saw uh, Lewinson Brothers, I saw all of the musicians that I've seen on TV, and I was just like, so I was just having a, a brilliant time, just sitting on the stairs, I think it was that sensible music, um, and I was just sitting on the stairs just watching everybody. The audition was a weird one as well, because we, we auditioned in front of each other. So it was just a full room of musicians, and um, Daniel's quite like, he wouldn't mind me saying that, he's a crazy guy. And he's got like this kind of ADHD, like his energy is amazing. It works so well on the stage, but on the bus when you're trying to go to sleep, it's not quite the thing. Um, love him to bits. Um, but yeah, he was doing his ADHD thing and his musical genius thing. Um, and then he's like, uh, did, is there Josh McKenzie in the house? And I was like, oh yes, yeah, me, you know. He says, well, come up and play then. And he kind of looked at me like, mm, how's this going to work then? Like, you're a kid kind of thing, you know? So I'll tell you what, we're going to play lap dance, you know, that N-E-R-D. Oh, baby, you want me? Right, cool. So he's like, we're going to play lap dance. I'll tell you when to jump in. I said, all right, cool. You know, sitting there and waiting. He's told everyone to come in and he hasn't asked me to come in yet. So I'm thinking, why is he not telling me to come in yet? And I thought, ah, whatever. Anyway, in the end, he goes, and you're going to come in? And I was like, you haven't told me to. I went, oh. Like, little kid, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's like, go on, solo. Now, when I left school, I was a bit shirty at school. Yeah, teachers speak to me in a little bit of a way. I'd be like, listen, I work with people your age. You don't need to speak to me like that. I completely understand what you're saying. I'm not trying to be challenging, but you're making me look like an idiot, and I don't like it. So I still had that bit of freshness from school. So I was like, you want me to solo? All right, I'll show you. Anyway, he soloed, and he, I remember him laying down on the ground. And he said, if you're a drummer and you're in the building, please go home, I found my drummer. And I was like, I was just saying, I was just trying to be nice, you know. So I picked up my stuff and left as well. And then the, the tour manager, he goes, no, come back, he, he wants you. And I was like, me, you sure? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, how, that's where it kind of then shooted off into me being, so it's the only audition I've ever done. I've never done any other auditions. I think at first it was very much so kind of like, you know, this is always what I've wanted to do. And I was just excited to be there. And then it got to a point where I was just like, okay, how do I push my career forward? It, I know that I've got musical MD, M, uh, musical directing skills, um, uh, but how am I gonna get into the game? Where am I gonna get a chance to be able to do that? Because I was always, I was always the youngest. And I was working with like, you know, people that are very experienced and doing the thing. So I was like, okay, well maybe it will come soon. But that was my next stage. After I was like, okay, you know, you've toured with Natasha, you've toured with Daniel, you've run around with Jamelia, you've done Lily Allen, you've done all of these things. It was great, you know, really good experiences, learned a lot of things. And I was like, all right, now I want to kind of like, kind of put my spin on some of the music. And sometimes you can't really do that through the drums because you're playing all of the beats and you kind of got to stick to the agreement of the music. Uh, what I realised was that um, you could kind of do a few things and the interludes that you make to link all of the songs 
um, that was the MD's job. And I was like, I could do that, I can do that. I wonder when I can get my chance. So um, years went on and Tiny Temper came up. Um, and I was asked to MD that. Um, and I used that as an opportunity to really kind of, kind of put myself out there as a musical director. And I felt like this was my chance to kind of almost overdo it, you know? And I went all the way with it. Like, and I, I grew up watching like the Usher gig, um, watching like Jay-Z uncut, watching The Roots and seeing how they done all of their arrangements and, and kind of like involved like little jazz musical bits and like, you know, R&B bits and like some gospel bits. And I was like, yeah, man, I want to be able to do all of that. And Tiny was just like, well, look, man, you do your thing. I trust you, do it. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then it helped me to understand now the business and how the music and what you do for the music, how it connects to them, then the artist being able to sell their record. So then it was like, well, if you completely rearrange their song, then you're, you're not su supplying the business side of it. You're just having a musical enjoyment, so to speak. Um, so um, I was able to then get into meetings with certain execs and kind of go, so what do you, what do you require? for the band and how do you want the songs to be presented and those kind of things. And that then kind of then put me into another space where I was just like, one second, I need to start from the studio, then get into being the MD, arranging the music, and then, you know, being the drummer. Um, so it was like each stage that I got to, I was learning new things and realized what it would take for me to be the drummer that I wanted to be within something. So starting from the studio perspective and starting with the artist from the writing perspective. And then I was just like, well, if I'm going to do that, then I might as well be my own artist. I might as well try and build my own thing so that I'm established as an artist. So that when I'm working with other artists, there's a like-minded understanding. They allow me to get involved with their music and their records. We can build it and then we can put in little musical ideas that would normally work for a live situation. And now when you get into the studio and you're rehearsing it, it's kind of already done a little bit and then you can add a little bit more, you can take away a bit more, whatever. But it meant that, you know, so that was my journey and I suppose I was young enough yeah. to kind of like have the time to kind of work it all out. I was running around with this lady called Mpo. She had just been signed to uh, Parlophone and her thing was she wanted, um, we had drums and, and guitar. And the way she wanted the stage to be set is having the drums stage right at the front of the stage and guitar stage left at the front of the stage. So she was like, I don't want you sitting down. I need you to stand up. And I'm like, drummers don't stand up. And she was like, well, you've got something new to work on then. And I was like, what? She was like, if you're gonna be in my band, you're gonna have to stand up and play the drums. So I was like, well, how am I gonna do that? So I got the icon rack and I kind of started piecing things together. I found a tall stool, but I, I, uh, I connected it to a, 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 drum, um, a cymbal stand and then kind of tried to connect it and kind of, and figure out ways of making this tall drum kit so that it looked as if I was standing up. And then eventually I started to get really excited when certain pieces of the, or certain parts of the show, and I'll be on my feet. And then I was like, well, I can't have my hi-hats in the normal traditional space. So how can I get a hi-hat that I can put on my back foot so that I can keep my balance? And then I realized that there was a pearl um, a hydraulic. Yeah. And that's when I first found out about one of those uh, hi-hat stands. So then I would put my hi-hat on my right heel, and then I play my bass drum with my left foot. Um, a lot of drummers don't didn't know that I was, I'm an ambidextrous drummer. So my feet are exactly the same. So whether I play on the left side or the right side, they just do the same thing. So, um, I, but when I'm playing electronics, I like to have my electronics placed on my right hand side. So I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna set my toms up going yeah. to my, yeah. And then, and then that means then I can put my hats in the middle of my drum kit. And then I can still play open handed, but I'm playing the wrong way around downstairs because then my bass drum is on my left foot and then my hi-hat is on my back heel. And so it made things interesting for me. 
really, really cool. And then I debuted it like fully on the Tiny tour. So I was standing up playing with Tiny, I was standing up playing with Wretch, standing up playing with Devlin. Any artist that I started playing with from there on, I was standing up and playing. And then 2012, I decided I want to do my own thing. And I was like, I incorporated all of my electronic drums with my live drums and used the electronic drums instead of having drum sounds. I then started to put like pieces of music. So I'd have a White Stripes bass line on one pad, a Jay-Z acapella on another pad, Rihanna, uh, Coplay, and I could mix like six tunes all in one. But the preparation time, I had to do it on the laptop, blah, 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 and then transfer things to the MPC, and then send them down the different lines. So I became a bit nerdy about everything, and I started doing this DJ drumming thing. So the people from Britain's Got Talent saw that, well, he's trying to build his thing, and I was just kind of like turning up, busking on the street. I would go to like schools, I'd go to colleges, and I was just doing this DJ drumming thing and just trying to build my McNasty name. But this guy that had worked with all of these kind of artists. And then Britain's Gone Talent kind of saw me, scouted me and said, well, you know, how would you like a chance to be able to come onto the show? This is what, this is what could be available to you if you win and blah, blah. And I thought, you know what? It's not a bad idea, let's do it. And now that I've signed my deal with Pearl, I'm bringing back the stand-up. Oh, cool. Um, obviously, the icon rack is from Pearl, um, and I just can't wait to like start that journey. It's going to be amazing. Come on, come on, yeah! <laughs>